recent study, researchers formed a least squares model using the variables X, saturated fat calories consumed daily, and Y, body fat percentage. The SSYY is equal to 1,286.1, and the SSE is equal to 1,037.2. Find and interpret the coefficient of determination R squared for the model. Okay, so it's clear that we want to find the coefficient of determination, which they nicely indicate is R squared that we're looking for, in case you're not familiar with the name, although you should be at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and work out the formula for R squared and look to see what they've given us. They've given us to calculate R squared some summary values, and it turns out they're just the things we need, because in order to calculate R squared, we have to do the summation or sum of squares for YY minus the sum of squares for error divided by the sum of squares for yy. So if we have these values, then we can just plug them in directly to calculate r squared, and it looks like that's exactly what we are given in the problem. So 1,286.1 minus the sum of squares for error, which they list as 1,037.2 divided by 1,286.1. Okay, now let's work that out and see what we come up with. So we have 1,286.1 minus 1,037.2. Subtract those, you get 248.9. So 248.9 divided by 1,286.1. Okay, so divide that by 1,286.1. And when we do that, we end up with the answer approximately 0 0.1935 dot dot dot, or approximately 0 0.19. Okay, now, how do we interpret this? Well, remember, when we look at our formula, it gives away the interpretation. We have a simple linear regression model here. What well, that means is that our simple model is going to try to predict y by using x, right? So we have one predictor, one response. That predictor variable x is not the only thing that determines how y turns out. So the differences between our sample y values that we see, they're due to something, right? We think that x is one of the causes for the differences. So in this case, our y variable is body fat percentages. We see people in the study with different body fat percentages. One of the things we think explains that is the idea of how many fat calories they consume daily, right? saturated fat specifically. But then there are other factors, right? Genetics, uh, you know, exercise habits, so on and so forth. All that's gonna be part of the error term, all the things we didn't include in the model. So essentially, um, when we subtract off those error terms or error values or the variation that's due to the error from the Y variation, what we end up having is the variation in Y that's due to X. So this whole top part describes the variation in Y that's due to X divided by the total variation in y. So this gives us the proportion of variation that's present in y that can be explained by x. So we're saying about 19% of the differences you see in two people's body fat percentages or the differences you see in body fat percentages among people, about 19% of those differences can be explained off by the inclusion of x in our model. So essentially, um, x doesn't have a huge role in predicting body fat percentage in people. So, of course, it's going to be difficult to uh, figure out what causes the biggest difference in people's body fat percentage, but you know, we can see here that X, the measure of saturated fat calories consumed daily, only explains about 19% of the variation you see between people's body fat percentages. And that's the interpretation of R squared.